Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Not Ashamed Gaming and our devotional number one. Now, we're going to be talking about campers, and I know how everybody loves campers. Oh, how we loathe the camper, the infamous camper. Everyone has heard about the camper, whether you've played the Battlefield series, Call of Duty, or any first-person competitive shooter, we've all raged at the camper, hiding somewhere on the map, waiting for some poor guy, often myself, to run by and to kill. Most campers are in the area of a map where they are not playing the objective, which means they are in no possible way helping their team out with winning the match. As a baseball coach myself, I am all about being team oriented and creating synergy in order to win. All it takes is for one part of the machine to remain idle to break up the synergy. The same goes for winning on the virtual battlefield. I'm competitive in nature, and even though it's still a video game, I still want to win. That's why it drives me crazy when not only do I get slayed by a random camper, but when my own teammates, and sometimes an entire squad, is wasting time camping. Call them noobs, call them whatever you want. But the more I thought about this subject, the more I realized that I've also been in their shoes. Think about it. Why do campers camp? Well, I have a few answers, or at least a possible version of it, because I've been there. The number one reason is most likely fear. I would often tell myself, I'm new at this game, I don't have this, or I don't know this map, so I'm just going to sit here. The number two reason is you're in a squad with people you don't know, and we, know, and we all know how important it is to communicate. And the last reason, number three, is that you've totally been getting slaughtered, so why not try to hide and get a few kills? As a Christian myself, I can relate to the camper in those three ways. I often get fearful, I lose communication with God, or at least I feel that way, and many times I feel the devil has just run me over. So let's break down those three points. Number one, fear. Fear causes us to remain idle. When we are idle, we are not impacting the kingdom, and we are exactly in the place where the devil wants us. An idle target is an easy target. There's no reason to fear with God on our side. The last thing I want is to make myself an easy target for temptation. We've all been commanded by God himself to be courageous. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He has promised us that we're not alone and has commanded us to be courageous. We cannot be courageous sitting in one spot. Courage is an action, and it means we're moving and making a difference. What's my first step, you may ask? Well, ask him to lead, and he will take you by the hand. Isaiah 41.13 reminds us of just that. For I am the Lord your God, who takes a hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Point number two, communication. I promise you, no matter how deep the hole that you dug for yourself is, God will hear your cry. He knows your heart and your thoughts, and he wants to talk, and he wants you to talk to him. Nothing can separate you from him. There may be a lot of noise on your end, but God hears you. The noise is the static the devil creates in the phone line between you and God. The static I'm referring to are the bad choices or sin that has so overwhelmed and consumed you to the point where God's voice feels faint or even non-existent. Listen to this from Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heft, height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. What awesome news is that? There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can separate us from Christ. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing. Oh, it may seem like it, but feeling like God is absent is a lie from the devil himself. When Jesus paid the ultimate price and died for all of us, he opened up constant communication and communion between humanity and God himself. Point number three, absolutely destroy. Just feel like you're being slaughtered. That old saying comes to mind, I feel like I've been run over by a Mack truck. We've all been there. Life does this to us, no matter what our age is. The devil will do this to us if we allow it. Once we've tasted the ill flavor of defeat, it's so easy to crawl in a hole and remain swallowed up in our humiliation and failure. In that hole, the devil will wine and dine you and set up a house for you to live in. 
Those chains are invisible and his deception is subtle. I'm not going to lie, the storms are fierce and the valleys are deep, but there is no circumstance or wreckage that God cannot deliver you out of. Charles Swindoll says it best, time after time, God brings us to our absolute end and then proves himself faithful. How else would we learn to rely on him if we don't have trials and tribulations that draw us closer? Romans 8:18 8, reminds us that whatever we're going through, we'll, we'll, it'll never compare to the end result. And this is what it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. So suffering is definitely not what any of us prefer, but we are promised that the glory we'll experience when the storm is over is far worth the pain. So the next time you're camping in life, seek the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. He will reveal himself to you and overwhelm you with his presence and power. I also encourage you to surround yourself with the people who won't allow you to camp. Those squad members are vital to your growth. Life is a battlefield and victory cannot be achieved while remaining idle. Thank you guys for tuning in for my actual very first devotional. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, hit that like button, subscribe, and hopefully I can get you guys some more content. Thanks for listening and God bless.